And I've released these DAT files also under GPL so that uh, everyone can play with them. <laughs> so if you want to, you can load up your dragon.dat file and go in there and mess with the coordinates. Have fun. <laughs> <laughs> it's not exactly sculpt 3D yet. I'm, I'm really surprised. No. <laughs> but that's how it began. This is how it all began. Does the juggler data file, does that have all the frames in it? It just has one frame. You said one. Yeah. Well, because it's rendered on the fly. So, yeah. so it you have, have to make your own frames. Yeah. Right. So apparently the original one had these move files that would do the deltas for you, but uh, those were lost. Unfortunately, all the original move files were lost. So you can't do the exact movement that he did originally because the, the files are destroyed. But but you, I wonder if there's any original files left on any or one of the other places. They've looked everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> it's all the search has concluded. That, that's like the Andy Warhol stuff was lost. On, it was on floppies. Yep. And it still could be on a floppy somewhere in the basement somewhere. Does Eric even still have his old hardware? Oh, I didn't ask him that. He still no. has his cape. His what? what? He wore a cape. No, no. Did no. Eric Graham? This is the, the other Eric. We're talking about oh, what's his name? Not Schwartz. No. No. Oh, um. He was here once. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, What's his name? He was, he was a Commodore guy, wasn't he? Yeah. Did that mix him up? The, yeah. Oh, um, this, this Eric, I don't think ever has been, hasn't been. No, he's like in Arizona. This guy, that Eric has a beard, as I recall. I mean, he's like an older guy. Is, who's, who's young in this group? Well, relative. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm young at heart. <coughs> yeah, that's what this like me. When this guy came out, I was. <laughs> Yeah, he's great. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, he, he was, he was <laughs> <laughs> So the challenge is, you know, how to make an animation out of this and stuff. So Olaf's been still hacking at it, and he plans to continue hacking at it. Oh, you serious? He's yep. having fun with it. He's going to put it on GitHub, and he's going to do more stuff, more stuff, more stuff. Yep. Yep. So the idea would be maybe you could uh, say, automatically rotate the camera and it would spit out an atom of all the frames rotating it. Yeah, you step that. One, that was right? the kind of stuff you did with skull. Step, yeah. step one and then step two maybe make one of the objects move, right? Yeah. Well they did move. Yeah, in the in the animation. Yeah. But that's every frame was rendered one at a time. And you have to go make a dot file for every time you change your mind. That's right. Yes. That's right. Okay. It, it's uh, it's claymation. <laughs> <laughs> yes. God, it's been so long since I used sculpt. But you see, you can go in here and change any one of these numbers, and then see what happens to the scene, and then slowly figure out. Okay, if this is the object, I'm going to move it over here, and move it in 3D space. That's, that's how you work it. And Olaf was very nice again. He made a dot parser file. That's a parser oh, yeah. that reads the DAT file and actually you can load in your own DAT file. So you could make a script that renders it or whatever you want, right? You could use AREX to change the coordinates in the file and then slowly move things. That's one way. If you're not so adept at C, you can do it in AREX, right? Or whatever you feel like. <laughs> it's GPL now. <laughs> Have you tried the uh, use lightweight? <laughs> That's cheating. <laughs> this is a great example of uh, Amiga coding. Well, there's sources in here to actually generate uh, the M file itself. Yes, yes. That I haven't tried it yet. I tried to actually. I did try to compile it, but it wouldn't work on the new compiler yet. There was some kind of pointer aliasing issue. I didn't get get around. I have to read your view here. What you're doing. But the Amazon directory contains some code that Olaf pulled from uh, public domain and added his own changes to uh, for building Amazon. Build Amazon files. Yeah. You just feed it a frame, and it will we'll keep adding to the Amazon file. Right. Yeah. yeah. In in which version? Which Amazon format? Do you remember? 
Which version? Oh, I don't know. I assume Adam 5, because that was the most common at the time, yeah. But <laughs> I mean, because the last versions of Adam included Sam, didn't they? I don't know enough about Adam. To I don't know either. That. I, it's been too long. But yeah. um, I thought they did. That's the, because it's an IFF file, you're allowed to throw any other kind of form in there. As long as the reader will read it. Right? As long as the parser, yeah. And there are some options in the source code. I want to mention anim output, it's called, anim underscore output. If you define that, it'll, link, it'll try to link in the anim stuff. Or PNG output, it'll try to load in the PNG stuff. Store rotational frames, that sounds interesting. I haven't quite figured out what that means yet. But it's called store rotational frames. It's in, that, it's in the source file. <laughs> I think that's when you're rotating things and moving objects around, maybe. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but there's a lot of interesting options in there. A lot of interesting options. So if you got nothing to do tonight, <laughs> I encourage you to dig in there. Because one thing I did fix was the uh, multiprocessing stuff. I brought it up to normal MigOS. 4.1 standards, so there's no forbids or permits or funny business in there anymore. It uses a uh, death on signal and stuff. You know what those are? <laughs> so when your child exits, it actually notifies the parent of all that's done for you. Jeez, if they'd only use that with, honestly. Well, why wouldn't you? Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> I know why. <laughs> See, the problem with keeping things compatible with the, with the ancient API is you get all sorts of problems. <laughs> and at some point, if you can give it up, you lose compatibilities. Yeah, but it works. <laughs> oh, working. What's it called? Notify on death sync task and notify on death sync bit. Great stuff. User data, I just pass it directly. It's, it's very simple, very simple to change. Um, I also use the new graphics API. You'll notice the word Picasso 96 is nowhere in the source code. Well, <laughs> there was never any in, in there. There was an OLS version. Oh, really? Yep. How long have you been working on this? 95, or 2005, sorry. 2015, my, my mistake, 10 years lost. There. Why would you start? I, I don't know. Well, he wants it to work on 2.x. Let me go as 2.x. And the only thing you have at that point is Picasso 96. Oh, that reminds me. The other neat thing about this code is it still outputs ham. Ham eight files? Yeah. If you don't have a graphics card and you're running on a classic machine, you can still use that code to generate ham images. How would we build this? How would we build this if we were running an OS3 um, machine? Well, I would suggest you use OLS version because it's all got all the uh, the hacks still in it. Yeah, but what what tool chain was he using? He's, SAS, he made it compatible with SAS. SAS. Yep. Yeah. Almost all the examples that I found in the original like RPR, it was all with Lattice. Yes. Yes, well, Lattice turned into SAS. It did, right? Yes, yes Lattice. Yeah. They are the same compiler, okay. except SAS fixed a lot of problems. Um, the thing is, you might have trouble with is the C library, right? The SAS has its own C library, so you probably have to take off that CLIP2 thing. Unless, you know, I think you made CLIP2 compatible somehow. I don't know. <laughs> I don't want to say it works. Don't jinx it. Yeah, <laughs> but I bet I could make it uh, work on a classic machine with the SAS C compiler installed. Because I believe that was his target. He used uh, Maker Forever or something to develop it. So it's really neat. So it's got a little bit of old, a little bit of new, and ancient history all in one. <laughs> That's what I like. Any questions? I'll talk about the code first. Yeah.
Which part do you want to go? <laughs> um, Me? I gotta, I, no, I, I think I'd actually first like to actually understand how these scene files work. Oh, well that's the scene parser. Yeah. <coughs> yes. So I'm looking at these data files and I have absolutely no idea what these numbers correspond to. I don't know if the scene file parser will help much, but... <laughs> well, I don't know how else you figure it out. Uh, you just figured it out. Oh, that's Olaf just uh, reverse engineered it. Olaf's, Olaf's a genius. Huh? Yeah. You can be too. I'm, a, I'm, a, there you go. I'm a London. Like, look what he figured out. He figured out all of the different uh, lines mean, right? And he enumbed them. That's nice. Yeah. So now you can figure out what the lines mean too. Actually, the first thing you probably do is add a bunch of printouts to the scene parser. Oh, yeah. If they're not there already. Maybe the, you put them in there. No, they're not. Oh, uh, no. I, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, print up each enum as you encounter it, and then you'll figure it out. Yeah. Even use the, the right spelling for color and everything. <laughs> uh, that's right. Keep that one down to that queen of yours. Oh, hell. Uh, <laughs> Soon to be king. Um, <laughs> Yeah, that's what I would do. I, I would put, throw some printups in there. Because yeah. it, it's fairly simple. I mean, it's a switch. And he figured out what each one was, somehow. Probably, probably took a few hours to, you know. And then he actually wrote a parser for every line, too, by hand and see. <laughs> the good old string character search. You know, these functions. Remember those? Extra, yeah. extra fun stuff. Wait a minute, but but why wouldn't this have been included with the original code? I don't know. I mean, did Eric hand? We didn't, we didn't have it. We didn't have it. I think he just uh, he had his own way of doing it. I think I can't remember how it worked. No, were they binary files or something? No, they were never binary. No. Did he say yeah, we have one that file? Internally to make the animation? Yeah, you take the one that file and then you do a, what's called a move file. Oh, yeah. yeah, that would apply the delta, 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 generate your anim. Yeah. And I believe he used his own anim format back then too. You needed a player for it, right? It was a binary. Just click, click. Huh. Yeah. Was there an animation class back in the day? Yes. <laughs> back in two. Not in Eric time. Not in Eric's time. Until Wait, it was Adam Lamb had to a little later. <coughs> no, the no, Adam, no. Adam format was pretty early. Yeah, that was so early. It came from Ages. It's 85. Yeah, Ages did it in the, almost, really, in yeah. the first thing. It was really early. Really yeah, maybe he did, yeah. yeah. I think it might have been these guys. It might have been Eric Graham and Ages. And, no, but um, if it was Adam, I would and, have the um, Adam file. It doesn't exist. Electronic so. Arts all came together yeah, they to did. come up with this animation format. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I think he helped uh, at least kickstart it if he didn't didn't help write it. Because uh, I remember the juggler. I, I would run it on my 1000 way back when. Oh yeah, that's what I was running sculpt on. And to do one frame, 640 by 480, I'd start it in the morning, I'd go to work, yeah. I'd come home, and then 640 by 40, frame would be almost done. Oh yeah. Pixel by pixel. <laughs> And then you know, go eat dinner or something, mm -hmm. come back, maybe it'll be done. Oh, cool, I got another frame. Save the frame out. <laughs> Start another render going, maybe that night you might have it done by morning. And if not, you started another frame in the morning and come back after work. Oh, I forgot that it actually has width and height, too. You can make it bigger. <laughs> Ooh, what about you for? There we go. You can, actually, you can actually vary the width and height and it'll re-render. Now, you know, it would be nice if you could just scroll it. And yeah, there's lots of stuff you could add to this. <laughs> I, yeah, he's got, he, he put a lot of uh, work into the port. Oh, there's that bug again. There, me, go away. <laughs> <laughs> Love 
that any, you can change the aspect ratio. Uh, look at that, all sorts of things. Measure timing, that's interesting. We can compare our machines. How long does it take for you to render that? And that took me <coughs> 3.39 3 at 78,679 rays per second. How many rays per second are you getting? I'm going to mm -hmm. find out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He put the measuring in there, too. It's totally cool. <laughs> so what was, what, were your, uh, what was the width and height? 800, 600. <laughs> 800 width, 600 height. It's a bit of typing. <laughs> it's even longer to type the here. And then you, oh, you have to put measure timing on the end. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think you beat me. Yeah. So I've got uh, total time is uh, four seconds, and you've got 3.39, 3.48. Is that a 460? Those are for the two. Yep. Yeah. So mine's a G4 one gigahertz. Really? How about that? <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah! <laughs> 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 you have races. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just, I thought it was really cool projects. So. <laughs> sure. It's the endless fun. It can be. For developers. <laughs> Normal people might think we're nuts, but... <laughs> Time for optimization. Oh yeah, it's yeah. just it. They don't. It's they just don't. a waste, right? And the fact that there's two processes, see, zero and one, and they're they're racing each other too, which is kind of neat. <laughs> it, it put a lot of work into this. I was very impressed. So the only real work I did was go through the legal crap and uh, and add a little bit of 4.0 sprinkling. <laughs> uses a new graphics API, so there's no console in that kind of thing. I did that one evening while Paul was on IRC. <laughs> so I'm converting it right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and I got, I, I got rid of the macros, too, because there was, oh, yeah. yeah, I made it 4.1 style, so it's got the uh, interface names on there, so you can tell where the uh, function calls are from. I also made that change. Oh, that's the, where's the source? Olaf has it in some of his as well. He's got it, um, some if defs. Still got some if defs lingering? Yeah. I graphics. There it is. <laughs> yeah, wait, blitz, free bit map. See, I put the I graphics in there. Yep. Yeah. A lock bit map. I didn't even use the new a lock bit map tags function. Didn't really need it. <laughs> now the right pixel array is where it's actually doing the real work. Right pixel array, render line buffer. That's where it's rendering directly into, that goes from some memory buffer to the RAST port. That's the window RAST port. There. That's that's the workhorse. It's called right pixel array. That was originally class 96, wasn't it? Yes. But wait. No. Yeah, right pixel array. Yeah, it was. Yep. It was. Yeah. There was another right pixel array function, but it was like right pixel array, array eight, eight or something. Yeah. 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 Right pixel. Yeah. 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 See so what Olaf added was the true color rendering. So he took the ham. Well, the ham's still there. Instead of doing, if it notices you have a graphics card, it just does true color. But if you don't, it does its, it does ham. So <laughs> it's like wow, yeah, it's pretty cool. And then there's the optional output to PNG file and such. Ham six, it's not even ham eight. Or just ham was six. Yes, ham, ham was always six bits, wasn't it? That's the original. The original. Or HEA added it back. Back when he created this, it would have been ham six only. HEA and ham eight. Yeah. Yeah. So there you go. More evidence. It's original.
Yeah. So it's, it's a pretty pretty unique little uh, project. <laughs> Where is Maine? So the resolution of these original machines back in the day, on a hand screen, was Three. less than the size of an icon of an icon. Yes. Yeah. 320 by 200, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. Good call. So far. Staggered. <laughs> <laughs> and then that, you, you did a, see, it doesn't do much, does it? It's render everything. Love that. Oh, well, here's something we can do for the PNG output. We should add an ASL requester to it so that it's not a fixed file name. Yep. So yep. Do that. There's all sorts of stuff you could do. Yeah. It depends on your mood. Yep. <laughs> that's a, that's a lot easier than trying to fix that uh, rendering quirk, right? Or you can just turn off compositing. The effect. <laughs> that makes it go away too. <laughs> What's the timer used for? Timers for oh, measuring. Oh, for the end and stuff. Okay. For measuring and for the time delays between frames. Okay. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, time code in there. Read e clock, do this and that. If you notice. Allocate a RAS port. And every line would be independent of every other line. I think that's how you get away with multiprocessing, right? You can render every the first line with one process, second line with another <coughs> process. Yeah. Yeah. They're independent, so that's how you can do it. That's nice. Horizontally because of ham. Right? Because ham pixels go horizontally and the one before affects the next one. The ham uh, algorithm in there is quite fascinating too. Like how it chooses what to do. So not to bring up the sort of subject, but um, this leads me to a general question that I don't understand. So when multi-core support comes sometime in the 2050s, um, how, how, will processes, will DOS automatically um, assign processes to core zero, or will it have a schedule so that it can be judicious and spread this stuff around? Yeah, well the idea was to get it all running on one core and then let the programmer choose to run it on the other one. Okay, so it would be, a flag, cut, it would right? be a flag that you'd pass when you, yeah. create, when you create the process. That was the first cut. Okay. Yeah. That was the idea. Because yeah. so, uh, it's just too painful to try and move everything all at once. Yeah. But then you kind of, through, through uh, testing and analysis, you could figure out what I can move to the other cores without breaking anything. <laughs> it's tricky, right? I, I wouldn't know I had so many examples. Not yet. 2050 is just around the corner. <laughs> Processes will be made out of like <laughs> bacterium or something by that point, and we'll be like, yes, at last. <laughs> Computers will be like portals into parallel universes that do all the processing for you, but we're still working on these ice. We're still juggling <laughs> And loving it. And loving it. Whoever's running Hyperion, Ben's great grandson. See, I told you it was coming. <laughs> Don't film it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but it's it's a there's a lot of code in here that's good examples of how to do Amiga programming though. Like the set signal, you're like, what? What's going on? <laughs> Little techniques that uh, Olaf has fine tuned over the years. Oh, I remember you going over this very first step on. Yeah, yeah, how to do your main loop on a GUI. Yeah, and it's just and it's just and it's just good etiquette to support all these uh, DOS signals. But you know, after looking through this code, I was like, I so want to use Window Class. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It just it just aches for it. <laughs> Actually, for that for that part, if you look at the composite YEP source code, um, I think you'll find out how to I think you need to lock and unlock the layers. 
oh. it between so you lock it, render, unlock it, and then intuition knows uh, what parts to update. Yeah, I even, I think yeah, if you look at the, the composite way you source code, uh, how we handle rendering there, that should probably that should be the same technique. It's something like that. Yeah. I think you're right. It's been a while. Now that you mentioned it. Yeah. Hmm. Where did I put that composite did you, stuff? Did 2015 you do this? Yeah, composite. So that would be, uh, that was two years ago. Did you have a link? There it is. Ooh, composite stuff. Uh, composite 3D demo, that's what it's called. Yeah, it's not on this list, actually. Composite yeah. YUV, that's what it was. Yeah. yeah, composite YUV. That's it. So no, it was Fort Depot or something. Well, we had it. We had it two years ago. I don't understand why it's not mine. Uh, it's the game handles. YUV. Does it have its own directory? Yeah, it does. Open up that. Composite YUV. YUV gradient. Oh, it's in video memory. Yeah, yeah. See, the window is definitely in video memory, and we're just blasting into it. It's generally no no. Oh yeah, that's right. Because when you do the right pixel array, you're just passing it. The, the the absolute address of that RAS port. Yeah, you're just going to slam it right bang, in there. It's not yeah. like a separate buffer or anything. It's no. just slamming right in there. So that's probably not not a great idea on a modern system. <laughs> Did I change it afterwards? You need to find the parallel <laughs> book composite tags. I must have a new version. This is the old one. Directly, the below, funk. directly below it. 
going. There it is. Yeah. <laughs> what you're calling uh, it? Hey, is that the room over there? Okay, now I see it. And there it is. <laughs> <laughs> I love when things hide. Right, and then composite tags. There. Why do you see guys always love to have all this white space? It's just wrong. Wasteful. Really? I, I flip flop that way to yeah. practice. Be like a pearl guy and just, right? The tab should be one character. It's, I, it's an awesome language in which it, in which you, the compile you better be result joking. is exactly the same it's, as well. Oh, oh, oh. You better be joking. It's called stream of consciousness. <laughs> <laughs> You're going downtown. <laughs> You know how many programmers I slapped for not putting spaces hey. on their for loops? Yeah. <laughs> it's a waste, it's a waste of space. Slap, 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 slap. Like look at all that wasted spaces around the OR operator, eh? Look at that. Why yeah. do that? What, what, there you go. Oh, that's better. Yeah! <laughs> Hard to read. Uh, yes, no, but it's about efficiency. It's not, it's not thinking about trying to make it hard to read. You just want it's efficient. This is tricky though it's to efficient. integrate this, but not impossible. I think I could do it like you know, an hour kind of thing. Take me a little time to remember how to do this stuff. Because <laughs> you got to move all that data from one context to another, like the rectangle data. Well, maybe you could just copy this, probably. Like you got it all here. You got your source bitmap, source offsets, scale. They, they shouldn't be too bad. Like most of the data is already taken care of. Needs more space, though. See? <laughs> That's definitely that. That would probably fix it, and it would make it very 4.1. Because then it's using composite tags. Yeah. We wouldn't have all these, so you, you do that plus a uh, little window dot class action and you have a well behaved, a well behaved little tool there. Yes. Yeah. Yes. We could do it. What would be really cool is if I could do real time resizing with the resize gadget. Well, you can do that once you've got this installed. Like the comments is mentioning, now you can resize it. Yeah. No, you, you, could could try, you could try just locking the layers and unlocking layers. Uh, With, within the right pixel array? Yeah, around the right pixel array. That should probably fix it yeah. by itself. Well, there's an eye layers interface sitting there, so uh -huh. go to town. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure if they actually, if it's if depth out, though, the layers interface. I can't remember now. The original code, because uh, it was doing something funky with that. With PNG, I think. Oh, you know, B, that one, B, B, Y, is doing it. Oh, Anim Output uses Layers Library, yeah. See, it's if depth on Anim Output if you're looking at the What? The iLayers interface. It's actually if depth right now. Oh, okay. So you, have, oh. you know, take it out of there. Ah. E e e e e e e e Lots of space. So easy. <laughs> Do something like that, and then the yeah, opposite. I did. Uh, you, know, you might notice I used my old um, open eye face, close eye face stuff. I showed off another DEF CON ago. Yep. Yep. I do you remember that? It still works beautifully for handling all the boilerplate stuff that you don't really want to get involved with. It's a little annoying, but it takes care of it. <laughs> is that uh, source code from the previous cons up on that wiki? Yep. Yep, it's all there. Well, this one is in the support.c file. I actually added that. If you go to the support.c file, that's my new function I added. It's all GPL2 now. <laughs> so, <laughs> in this context. I wanted it to be GPL since Eric wanted it to be GPL. <laughs> Just trying to maintain the spirit. <laughs> and 
it's a it's a shortcut to um, open an interface by opening the library underneath. Right. And then when you close the interface, it actually goes and retrieves the old library pointer and closes it for you. Kind of does the boilerplate stuff for you. Oh yeah, yeah. I've seen it. Before. Yeah. And then I added a notify user method as well for errors. So you go to the notify user, it's got the old easy struct, easy request args, <laughs> that old thing, mm -hmm. to do the notification to the user. It, it helps uh, cool. get rid of the boredom of doing right. this stuff. I don't know how, how many times people have done different schemes. I, I saw some, some code that had a table where you list the library, the interface name, and all the versions, and then you feed it to this routine. Right. And then yeah. you go chuk, 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 and spit back all the pointers for you. You can go all that way if you feel like it. Or you're just bored. Yeah, I mean, you're bored. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it does take care of it for you, but. Yeah. As long as you check the result of everything. You yeah, and once you're done, you're done. Yeah. 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 It uses yeah. all your projects. I kind of use Open iFace on all my projects now. My own little way of doing it. My own little world. I got open class, closed class too, right? <laughs> I mean, yeah, my own world. And I, I still have open iFace name, so you can use, if you don't want to use the word name, main, because some interfaces don't use main. Right, like yeah. application.library. Yeah, where they have multiple interfaces yeah. in them. Like mm -hmm. application.library. Yep. And expansion library too. That's yeah. right. Yeah. And you can hack at that. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But that's a, I, I'd love to put this in there. I just don't want to do it right now because you probably get bored watching me. But. <laughs> 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 Any more questions? Or do you yeah, want me to we, walk through anything? We have homework to do now, too. It's only 2 o'clock. <laughs> I can keep going. <laughs> well, it's on the menu for well, we can we can uh, delve into either Jamie or Michael. Also, both sound good. At some point, will you be able to give us an overview, roughly, of what to expect with the next SDK drop? Hmm. Or are you not really in a position to do that right now? Well, I'm just building it. <laughs> okay. So I don't know the answer, do I? Yeah, I I, I did update Clib too. Like I said, well, you know now. Yeah, you got it. I do. Uh, updated. Uh, ABC shell. GCC is update point five three. GCC is five something. We don't have to talk about this now. Just yeah. Five four. Yeah. Five four. Well, he he said ask questions. So yeah, yeah. Ask questions. Ask a question. <laughs> I mean, at some point I would love to take a look at that. Yeah. The new new includes, of course. So that's really what I'm interested in. Is the API changes? Oh, yeah. I don't know them yet. The, the guy introduced to uh, update. Well, I'm, I'll probably end up generating the, the yeah. release stuff. See, so what I do is I take the current version and uh, subversion, then do a def and then take out the stuff that's not supposed to be released yet. <laughs> that's how I do it. That sounds painstaking. Right? It is painstaking. I we should use labels, <laughs> tags. It's like, <laughs> but I will create one once I figure out what the versions are supposed to be. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, that will also be whatever Autodox correspond as well. Right. Right. Usually it's not too bad because there's not many API changes that happen unless it's a major release. Well, there was for final update, or whatever final edition, whatever the hell it's called. I don't know anymore. Final edition, <laughs> final edition update one. No, 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 no final edition, because the SDK that we have now, of course, no, it was final edition. Final update, no, final edition update, update one. one. Yeah, we don't have the changes, we don't have the SDK update associated with that. No, well, because it was final, I guess. No, never mind. The point is, I'm, I'm quite curious to see what the actually needs to make sense. Yes, yes. I'm more, I'm more worried about the hardware, so. Not whatever version is out there, but. <laughs> I want to make sure we can generate code for the X5000 that's optimal. Yeah, that's what I'm shooting for. It's difficult to, to pull it out in time, because you know the stream has kept moving, and then you've got to go back and pull out the stuff that's slightly older. Can't, can't cross the streams. That's right. That's right. Dogs and cats living together in a massive area. 
GPL, we now have to go get his permission to take the pieces that we want. <laughs> this was before he was subsumed by the Aeon monster, so it's okay. We can... oh, oh, wait. Don't, don't, don't video that. Too late. <laughs> <laughs> but that, that's how you do it, though. If, if there's any code you find out there that you want to incorporate, you should ask, right? Politely. <laughs> you know, which pieces do you want to rip off? And, I mean, borrow. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> like the technique is the same, but it'd be really hard to not do it exactly the same way. <laughs> Actually, I have a better suggestion using this code because you don't really need compositing. Right. So just render to a private bitmap. Yep. And use split bitmap Rust block. Yep, that's that was the and way I originally thought to do it was to go to private and put that automatically it. use yeah. DMA on machines that have it as well to copy yeah. across. Well, I also thought why wouldn't why don't you allocate the private bitmap to video map and then hope that. Uh, but you're I mean you're rendering to it on the CPU. Oh, we're rendering, uh, on, the you're rendering to it on the CPU, and then when you use split bitmap Raspberry, right, right, right. it'll use DMA if it can to copy it yeah. to the window. That I forgot, we're rendering on the CPU, that's why. Yeah, 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 yeah. Unless we write a shader that will do the uh, do the ray trace. Get on that, would you? <laughs> Can you raise it? A ray tracing shader quick? <laughs> You're not done yet? <laughs> There's so many possibilities, what can I say? Uh, I actually found a, a version of Juggler, speaking of shaders, that was done 100% in shaders, a clone. Okay. Out there. Uh, if you Google around, there's people that have taken the original Amiga Juggler and try and write, recreating it in all sorts of ways. Uh, he, he was a, or he is a Blender developer. Okay. So he knew what he was doing. Yeah. So it, it ray traces in real time, so to speak, but it's kind of cheating. Depends on how you want to look at it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I think I saw one in JavaScript even. I know it's good. I think I remember saying something that day. Yeah. There's all sorts of versions of this uh, demo out there. All sorts of things you yeah. can do, right? But it, it all came from Mr. Eric Graham. So there you go. <laughs> And now you have the original DAP file. <laughs> and you can make it look exactly like it used to. <laughs> questions? Questions? He's got a curious, puzzled look on his face. Extracted frames from the animation. What was it? Oh, it, was, it wasn't M format, no. Original is stored in a unique file format that was never used in any other animations. Where's oh, Paul? Oh, he, he had a big full book. Um, oh, he's all architecting again. Um. <laughs> he's got to be gloomy. Priorities. Yeah. Well, right. he, what, well, it doesn't say what he calls it. He just says. It was some unique format. And there's a link to it. File format. You could get all the details about the unique format. Yeah. 
be the link. The link is. Yeah, I'm kind of afraid to press it because no, it could explode. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he's, he, he wrote this unmovie, which extracts it. It's on Happy Net. So only later it says and format appeared. So he must have done it as early as before the consortium that created the Anon um, standard. Yes. I would be so lucky that it, oh, it actually goes. Oh, oh. It's working briefly. Maybe whatever it was went away. I, I, I hope so. History, there it is. That's what I'm looking for. 88. Ah, there you go. That's why. Yeah, okay. 85, this code's from. You're picturing men with no shirts running around. No, that wasn't my image. <laughs> Smart <on. laughs> Okay. You haven't seen 300? No. Ultraviolets. Anyway. <laughs> That's um, why it didn't come around until 88. Or until, uh, this, this code is very old. <laughs> Now we have all the anim formats actually uh, documented on the wiki. And there's code out there to parse them. I wonder if eMotion can actually play uh, anim. I don't know if they use it. I don't think they use data types. No, they do their own thing. That's basically in there or something. Ooh. Look at that. Can't tell what it does for formats. Eh? It's a surprise. <laughs> He's in a boat. No. Still a surprise. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Any more questions about this? No. You now you got to do the one with the lamp. Oh. Remember the animation with the lamp? Oh man, you what guys lamp? just never stop. <laughs> <laughs> you know how long it took me to do this one? <laughs> Okay. Well, the, the, the I'll story, get my lawyer to look into it. The story I remember. <laughs> the story I remember is that this somebody went to this uh, like the computer oh, show God. system where Pixar was showing off its its anim thing, and somebody in an Amiga booth created one. And I think it may have been Terry Schwartz or Graham, um, and they, they started showing it in, the, in their little little booth, and people streamed over there to see this fancy lamp thing that they've been told it took you know a supercomputer to do on the Pixar thing. And the, and the Pixar people came over and said, cease and desist. <laughs> <laughs> so, but it got out in the wild, of yeah, course, and yeah, we, we yeah. got to see the little lamp. See, the problem is the release part. You didn't release it, <laughs> they wouldn't have bothered you. <laughs> so, uh, to answer your, your Adam question? 88. 88 is when it came out. So, it, this format, that juggler was in with some private Format he invented. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I kind of had this recollection that you ran a program to see this. Yes. I that's what I remember too. There was some program you ran and it was some special. But program. I think it was sculpt that was part of the sculpt generated um, and it, you made a whole bunch of frames and then they all got Yeah, sculpt ready. came from that. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's interesting stuff. It's you history, guys, hey? Oh yeah, there, well, because the whole war with um, the, the what was the name of the company, the lamps, uh, Pixar. Pixar. They uh, then Pixar did something with <laughs> the <laughs> unicycle, the unicycle's dream or whatever it was, and, and then and so Aegis came out and did this whole thing with a unicycle and yeah. was, you know, yeah. uh, Aegis. I can't remember the program, but um, and they had it just wheeling around through this yellow and green field. And then it comes to a road, and then <laughs> <laughs> he runs it over. Oh, and then the wheels just go bouncing off. They because they used the Lamborghini as the three D model for the or yeah, was yeah that was their, uh, their big thing. As their three yeah. D model for um, yeah. what their three D program was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, was, yeah. There were a ton of those kind of things. Naughty boys just piss them off. <laughs> yeah, poke, poke, poke the bear. Exactly. <laughs> I was just asking if there are any more questions because you missed half of them. So. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs>
I was just, I tried to <laughs> compile this thing and I'm coming up with uh, undefined reference to underscore underscore IOB. At the C library. Is that the C library? Yep. And then so I, yep, this is, I tried using the GNU cool. make file that was there and changing the, the line take out. Take out the CLEB2? Just take it out or just, change it to new line? No, just take it out completely. Okay. Yeah. Delete it. You probably, you know, the other thing is you probably have to do a make clean because you might have compiled something with CLEB2. Take make clean and then you go make to clean out the old junk. Oh, okay, so Simon actually did do a code bench release last night, apparently. Uh, no, he just did it now. Actually, I, was gonna, so I, I have the link, I mean, well, it's on his website. If you go to... Yeah, I'm downloading it now. You go to... Oh, you're, uh, the, you're, you're the person who slowed down the net. Now it won't run. Now, well, how I'll, did you I'll, slow I'll, down the I'll, entire I'll, internet? <laughs> give, give me yeah. your, hey, Steve, give me your thumb drive. I'll put the thing on there. If you guys want to sneak it around. <laughs> yes, Catch. I, I want to update code bench. <laughs> Oh, I love the new code bench, yeah. I love Simon's work, but he's a little bit uh, slow. Hi, Simon. <laughs> it's Get not, those releases out. It's not Get those. Those. Well, and he keeps making releases. He's up to version 53 now. 55. It took me three days to go through, or 55, right? 53 wow. was Sunday. Well, it took me three days to go through the release notes. To, re to read oh. all of them. Most of them are bug fixes, and I made a list of the things that were new, and of course it's on my freaking 5,000, and the file didn't back up to my hard drive, so I don't have the list here. Wow. <laughs> wow. I, I got to call home. But the, cha the change notes are huge. Like, the amount of stuff oh. that has changed. So it's just been a long time between. Yeah, yeah no, it's not that he hasn't been working. Because well, he writes ah, everything okay. in it, he, and it's like, Probably 80% of the changes are yep, all yep. refinements and bug fixes. To, he used to want to set it up so you wow. release some of it every every annual. Yep, yep. But it's been a couple of years. <laughs> right. Ah, uh, okay. Good work. Yeah, okay. so, now there's. Um, it's, a, it's a cool tool. Um, it's a very cool tool. It oh, is. Oh, it's an excellent thing. Like, it, it reminds me of Visual Studio. I mean, it's. <laughs> it's well, it's pretty cool. You use these tools. The out in the wild on all the other. How does I mean? And you haven't used CodeBench very much, so I, I do on smaller uh, projects, not big stuff, right? Because right? he's got that supports multiple targets, code folding. Well, he added a Arex projects type. Nice. Um, he nice. just even mentioned to me here, and I it was in the, after I rebooted yeah, and I installed it. That he's got, and I'm not even sure exactly how it works out. That um, he's got a HTML code type with an automatic uploading. Whoa! So when he changed the web page to include the new thing, he's like, "Oh yeah, I just did a new code bench and hit the auto <laughs> the plugin for uploading it to the server." Wow! <laughs> Simon is a, Simon is an impressive programmer. Wow. Wait a minute, is this installer that looks suspiciously like the new um, style installer also looks somewhat different than the Because it's not his own. Problem. So he wrote his own? Yes. Yeah. Of course he did. That's amazing. Well, so that or did he, was he involved in writing the... Um, the it's possible. The OS4 one. It's possible. I don't know. Can't think of it, no. I've fiddled with that installer before. Yeah. The OS4 one. Yeah. It's Python based. So it's got Python as a scripting engine. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Uh, where was that? Video, yeah. Uh, text. Version 1 of Java. Okay. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I'll put the new STK browser on here too. Why not? So you're going to pass it around. Brand new STK browser too. Woo! Well, uh, yeah, mine are updated for <laughs> I found a bug. I fixed it. Bugs? The verification department dropped the ball. <laughs> errata! Errata! <laughs> 
Fred Fish had it too. The only thing I really added was the GPL. <laughs> oh. <laughs> to make sure it stays out there. Oh, yeah. okay. Uh, I wouldn't be able to do any of the stuff without equipment. That's how good it is. It's for beginners like you. It's actually interesting the support. I mean, you, you memorize <laughs> over all the years all these tools and ideas. People like me, when we didn't have an environment, we would we would we'd be frozen out half the time. We'd have to no. work for our editors and then learn all the other stuff. You know what we could do is we could take this uh, Amy Ray Tracer and import it into CodeBench. That's what I was doing. Shouldn't be too hard. It's pretty self-contained now. Yeah. Load her in. Paul will finish it up. <laughs> wow. Uh, did you do it? Hold on. It just, just, why did it just say that it has a brief right there? That's Rexport! Good. What? That would be awesome. I want to add a Rexport. That's easy if it's window glass. Well, that's my point. I mean, I, I think it would be really, really cool because then, that, no, seriously, then that way I can do camera control, all sorts of other funky things that we get in Rexport. Oh. Yeah, I'll make it scriptable. Oh. Yeah. Oh, I like this. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I like this idea. <laughs> yes. That's that's handy. Yeah, and it's not hard to use that uh, mm -hmm. Rex class. You're right. You're right. It's just a little cumbersome. It's not that cumbersome. <laughs> no, it's not. But there, no, there, there's examples. Um, I I make I make clean new examples on the wiki for per sending messages, receiving messages, and running macros. Wow, really? Years ago. We did a presentation on it. It was in his Of course we did. <laughs> Step back one page of your web browser there. <laughs> of course we did. How could I forget? <laughs> 16? No. Oh um, no. It's, it was uh, one of the it was the year that it wasn't filmed. Uh, uh, July 12. Simple IP. No, simple IP well, was, I think, the next year. Wasn't yeah, it? so it would have been the next first one. Previous. Oops. Dang, I hit the button. Scroll down. Scroll down. Too late. Well, scroll down. Maybe it'll override it. This will eyebrows it, would. It'll be 27 second IP ping times. That's a lot. <laughs> and that's if you're lucky. That's it. Might be a 49 second ping on, time. On a good day. That's an eternity in, um... <clears throat> oh. <laughs> All right. I like the, uh, I like the editor changes. This is good. You looking at a new code bench? Yeah. Why don't you look at your proc tree, uh, project? Oh, I forgot about that. that. Yeah. yeah. I still refer to it sometimes. I do too sometimes. What do you refer to it as? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. No. <laughs> no, like when I want to, you know, I want to see like some simple examples of um, using some of the uh, process um, what do you related mean? functions in DOS. Why is it you so mean to me? <laughs> so back in, uh, oh. what did we do? Paul's given two presentations of this. Paul did that presentation the first year, the first year 2012, and then the second year. It was, it was 13 or 12, because he did it the second year. Yeah, 12. 12. 12. Thank you. Yeah. A-Rex, A-Rex, there you go, even with a video. Uh, Don't download it, for God's sake, man. Too late. <laughs> <laughs> I know. We could be here for a century. <laughs> Well, who knows? It's maybe the paint times are bad. Once it starts downloading, multi core. Was the video running uh, in uh, Emotion? It's, not. it's, it's a YouTube video, video yeah. I think. It's MP4. No, I think it's YouTube, isn't it? No. 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 It's in Dropbox MP4. Oh.
Now, I read something that, that uh, Trevor's daughter wrote this this, this bit. No, not that. Not that. Not that. The one that was included with the uh, X1000. No, that is the one. That's no, that, no, that, was, that was that was from what's his oh, name? Oh, that's Irwin Sawa. The Japanese fellow. Yeah. Okay. So which, which is the one that Trevor's daughter wrote? If you go low, if you go to your presets, it's called Aeon.Wave or something. Aeon? Rayon or something? No, 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 no. You're, you're the Rayon Leaf or something. That's her artist. artistic Yeah, it's her artistic No, but I mean, the, the he's, he's asking for the name of the file. Yeah. yeah. Boy, don't click those buttons, boy. Okay. <laughs> Did you get the code bench? Yes. You're still clicking over there. I'm trying to make sure this is. I'm running the right piece of shoulder. Oh, okay. Okay. And it's spectacular. Oh. Spectacular. Spectacular. Whoa. All right. So. Who needs it? Okay. You already downloaded it, I think. I think I'm. Well, I know it's got to come over here. It's not going to be in browser. Yeah, I think. I think we might do that one tomorrow. What do you think? Okay. <laughs> yeah, save something for tomorrow. I'm gonna work on this. <laughs> Downloads, copy. Probably call. Whoa, what is that? 55 SE. Yeah. Yes. Special edition. What's this? All all of his non-commercial releases that he's doing early on. Are it doesn't have multiple project support. Oh, it's like solely excellence. 